ओके हेलो एवरीवन नाइस टू सी यू ऑल अगेन बैक टू द क्लासेस नाइनटीन पीपल हैव जॉइन ऑलरेडी थ्री पीपल आर यू जॉइन आई गेस तो वी कैन नॉट वेट फॉर देम बिकॉज द मीटिंग गोज ऑन ओनली फॉर फोर्टी मिनट्स एंड देन वी हैव टू एंड द मीटिंग सो या अबाउट यस्टरडे स्क्विज एवरीबडी परफॉर्मड इट नाइसली बट द ओनली थिंग इज दैट थ्री क्वेश्चन दैट वर ऑफ टू मार्क्स ईच Uh, what happened about those is whatever answer i write the same terminology has to be entered over there so little bit here and there will also give you a wrong answer so it was a trial and error for me as well and it was a trial and error for you guys as well i just wanted to see how the scheduled exam on google classroom works exactly quiz exam basically so it went well uh, you guys did well but i think uh, there were some full forms that i asked for uh iec many people got it wrong is like institutional ethics committee which i had talked about uh, in yesterday's lectures also and then the full form of uh, ich i had asked for that is nothing but international harmonization on uh, uh, ica sorry international conference on harmonization uh, ha, uh, sorry harmonization yes and uh, what else was there in the question if you guys remember i'm trying to log into my google classroom but due to some reason i'm not able to just a minute i guess we can mm -hmm. we can just go through the questions and today we'll be continuing the ethical issue slide the last slide and then we'll move on to iec that is nothing but institutional ethics committee what is the composition of institutional ethics committee and uh, composition in the sense who all people can be there on the board and uh, what is their role what what are their roles and responsibilities okay so let me just uh, check this one out <coughs> the internet connection is really unstable i guess at this moment of time am i audible now or still my voice is breaking you can type it in the chat Yes, you can tell me also if you want. Is my voice breaking? Okay. Ah, uh, the little bit connectivity issue from my side. It happens sometimes. Okay. So I think uh, we can discuss the paper later as soon as I can open my Google uh, email account. It's not opening due to some reason over here. uh so we can move ahead with the slides and discuss things accordingly uh as and when we proceed so uh i think we were done with this particular national commission for the protection of human subjects of biomedical and behavioral research so uh, it had a, a national act uh that we mentioned uh, that they established in 19 uh, just a minute 1974 and then uh, furthermore they developed the belmont report 
and uh, belmont report uh, is based on three uh, uh, discussions first is boundaries between the practice and the research and basic ethical principles and its application so framework of the belmont report is presented in this three discussion topics so what what uh, what would be the boundaries between the practice and the research what are the basic ethical principle a researcher should follow or a institute should follow and the application of the same of the research that they are going to do so uh what do you mean by practice is the interventions designed solely to enhance the well-being of an individual and outcome should be reasonable expectations of success and what is research is the activity designed to test a hypothesis that contribute to social well being and permits the conclusion to be drawn okay so there is a difference between the practice and the research that you want to do and both of them have a kind of different kind of outcome so uh, so your belmont uh, report is completely based on that so what what exactly you want to practice and what exactly you want to put into the research kind of area okay and what exactly should be the outcome of both the things like as in practice and research then consists of three basic basic principles the belmont report respect for person beneficence and justice i think this question was uh, the one i had asked for right uh, in the what are the three principles on which belmont report is based so respect for the person uh, the beneficence and the justice so what do you mean by respect for the person to treat person as a autonomous having the right of sole self govern uh, agents and, and in the sense they have their own rights to decide whether they if i talk in terms of clinical trial whether they want to stay sit for particular clinical trial or whether they want to quit the particular clinical trial if they are not happy with it whatever could be their reason it's completely their right then protect those who have diminished autonomy for example children prisoners and elderly so vulnerable vulnerable population these all people they come under the vulnerable population because children obviously if they are not 18 plus they are not counted as an adult and hence they become they come into the category of vulnerable vulnerable population elderly also once your person becomes 70 plus it's very difficult for the person to take a right kind of a decisions and uh, what could be good, better for uh, their own health and prisoners uh, they are treated as subjects of their own uh, by by researchers means that is what happened in the history like you know uh, na uh, nazi people treated the prisoners as their subject you know as their guinea pigs in order to carry out some kind of a research so uh, these vulnerable populations should be protected and they should be also reserved with their autonomy rights okay uh, next is beneficiaries do no harm okay maximize the benefits or and minimize the risk not an act of kindness or charity but a concrete obligation okay so beneficiaries should be uh, uh, in such a way that it's an obligation on a researcher that you have to take care that your benefits, whatever benefits you're offering are much higher when, when compared to the risk that people are taking by participating into a clinical trial. And you, your beneficiaries should be in on a um, basic principle of do no harm. So there should be no harm at all in your clinical trial. So, and that is the, that is the, main reason people started means like uh, whatever these uh, uh, bodies were there whatever these people were there they decided that they have to build up a committee which will go through all the documentation that a researcher or an institute is trying to put ahead and go ahead with a clinical trial so there is a force that is sitting above of all the institute and researchers which will govern whether you can proceed with this particular clinical trial or not in order to make sure that these three basic principles are taken care of okay <clears throat> then justice uh, treat people fairly do not exploit those who are readily available or malleable then fair distribution of the risk and the benefits of research based upon the problem or issues under the in investigation so 
fair distribution of the risk and benefits. So I have been telling you risk should not be higher than the benefit they are going to get. And currently, whatever benefit people are getting by participating in two clinical trials are completely monitored benefits. And also they are contributing to the social well-being. So they are considered for a much higher benefit when compared to a normal uh, kind of a study. Normally, in the sense, there are two kind of uh, uh, studies that are conducted. Either one is the one, uh, one are called as clinical trial, which are completely new kind of a study. For example, अभी COVID का ही example ले लो तुम लोग. हम लोग clinical trial कर रहे हैं because ये completely new disease है, right? And for this new disease. uh we do not have any vaccine and hence we are going for a clinical trial then you have bab trials also that is bioavailability and bioequivalence trial what is this bioavailability and bioequivalence trial that i am manufacturing a drug same as that of other companies right cipla has already manufactured the drug say for example paracetamol very basic example okay and i have also manufactured paracetamol but i have to check whether the bioavailability and the bioequivalence of that drug is same as that of what cipla has produced okay for that also i'll be enrolling subjects in my trial that those are known as bab trials and i'll be checking for bioavailability of my drug into the blood samples of the subjects who are enrolled for my bioavailability and bioequivalence trial and i'll be comparing with the standard uh, manu, uh, market standard which is already available in this case is cipla uh, drug paracetamol drug and i'll be checking whether my drug is as uh, same as that of uh, cipla or not and if i if i am getting correct results and say which are same as that of uh, paracetamol of cipla then i can go ahead and market my drug so these are simple bab trials and then you have a clinical trials okay so clinical trials are basically for the diseases which are new and the drugs which are new for a old disease it could be either way okay so that is what it is next is <clears throat> application so consideration of the three general principles in the conduct of the research lead to the consideration of informed consent process risk and benefit assessment and selection of research participants okay on what basis you will be selecting and what kind of participants you will be selecting for your clinical trial so application of this particular three general principle came in for the consideration of this three important points and these are the most important points so tomorrow if you go in any kind of a company which are dealing with clinical data management who are dealing with you know clinical trials or fir bab trials you will come across this three things a lot informed consent process risk and benefit benefit assessment and selection of the research participants so these are the most important factors that are going to be considered and currently also these these three factors stand out a lot when it comes to clinical trials and clinical data management okay irb members should be consider should consider the following so just give me a minute over here really sorry for the interruption um so application of the respect for persons okay let me just go through this particular slide and let me see whether we should read the iec first and then we should come back here or what okay no problem we can go ahead and uh, uh learn these factors as well and then we'll go to iec irb is nothing but institutional review board so you should know all this full forms so by far we have learned about ich what is ich full form what is gcp full form what is iec full form what is wma full form what is irb full form okay i'll be writing all this in the chat box can anybody tell me what is the full form of uh, wma you can write it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and tell me 
what is the full form of wma okay good so pratibha is given the right answer that is world medical association what is the full form of irb just now i told you please don't google you have to tell me through yes institutional review board what is iec institutional ethics committee or it can be also called as independent ethics committee okay and uh, next next what did i say uh, irb I, ich is nothing but ich yes right kajal is international conference on harmonization good clinical practices so i see gcp is the word then next important thing that for us is icmr can you guys tell me what is icmr it's only it pertains to india so there are guidelines from ich gcp and there are guidelines from icmr gcp indian council of medical research that is very true tanuja and pratibha yes 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 everyone is writing now suraj sandhya yes your answers are correct okay so irb members should consider the following points that what are those points application of respect for persons so informed consent process how the informed consent process should be that is what is written in this particular slide so information that is the consent form provide all the information necessary for individual to make a reasoned decision so in your informed consent form that is what i have told you guys before as well that you should be writing all the information about your drug and what are the probable effects effectiveness of the drug what are the side effects of the drug when they will be administered with the drug what exactly is going to be a timeline for the study of the clinical trial so that all information should be coming into your informed consent form then comprehension is the consent form crafted in language understandable to the potential participants so this is the most important point understanding so comprehension has to be so it cannot be in english it cannot be only in marathi or in hindi it has to be in a language which is perfectly understandable by the participant who is going to sit for the clinical trial so either it can be in english it can be in hindi it can be in uh, uh, marathi it depends on what kind of a language the volunteer is understand then voluntariness does the consent form and clearly indicate that participate uh, in the research is voluntary and that is the reason that is the only reason that uh, every volunteer who is participating in the study has to sign each and every page of the informed consent form it is like signing an agreement that you are agreeing to each and every pages each and every point that is written in the informed consent so what additional protections can be in the place to protect those with limited autonomy and how to determine whether one lacks the autonomy to make a reasoned decision so what what is what additional protection so these are the three three things that we do on current basis 
so how else you can protect the uh, human right or autonomy of a person and what uh, what kind of a, uh, how to determine whether one lacks the autonomy to make a reasoned decision or not so basically that what they are trying to tell you is that nobody should be forced into some kind of a trial due to nobody should sit in uh, no should it, nobody should enroll for a clinical trial just because they are getting a lot more lot much amount of money so a researcher should not also you know increase the uh, amount ya fir aisa unhone bolna nahi chahiye i will give you this much amount of money and you just sit for the clinical trial i just want this very badly so it has to be a reasonable risk and benefit kind of a ratio has to be calculated before hand on so so this this comes under so what what else you can do that these are the two questions that you can think about and let me know tomorrow or something what how else you can protect the human uh, autonomy rights and if at all uh, how to determine who is capable of taking their own decision and who are not capable of taking their own decision okay so these two questions we will discuss tomorrow i will be putting this particular slide today in the this thing in our uh, google uh, material so applications of beneficence so this was in regards to application of respect for person and what do you mean by application of beneficence so assessment of risk and benefits so risk refer to the probability of harm when considering the risk one should consider both the probability and the severity of the invasion harm while the term benefit refer to the something that promotes the health and well being or welfare so risk kya hota hai and benefit kya hota hai ye unhone yahan pe bataya hai right so how much of the risk the subject will be taking by participating into your clinical trial and what kind of a benefit they are going to get in order by by party by giving their share for uh, health well being and welfare of the society so what are the risk or or risk of harm to or harm to the participant consider physical psychological social and economic harms are the risks justified can they be minimized so these all points you have to think upon when you are calculating your risk okay so risk has to be minimized so physical risk is always going to be there because we do not know even if we have animal toxicity toxicity study which are having a good amount of result who are which are having promising result but you do not know what might happen in a actual clinical trial on a human subject can the can the research design be improved to minimize the risk and maximize the benefit and what are the benefits to the participants and to the society to the participants you can give them monetary benefits and uh, everything like lunch dinner and everything so i have worked in glenmark where uh, i have observed the ba 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 trials um uh one on one because i was a qc agent over there so uh, we have seen that then whenever the subjects has uh, have enrolled into the facility uh, starting from their breakfast to their water requirements to their dinner lunch etc evening snacks everything is taken care by the company okay for that uh, participation they would be getting around say 20000 to 30000 for sitting for one bap trial and it could have two phases it could have three phases it depends on what kind of a medicine we are working with okay so these are the benefits you you can talk about and then to society if this uh, particular trial turns out to be good currently we all are hoping that uh, the covid 19 clinical trial should work the vaccine clinical trial should work so if that happens right now you see everybody is going to be in such a good Uh, uh it for society for whole world it is going to be such a beneficial thing because we all can go out and roam around freely rather than just sitting at home right and uh, doing everything virtually so that is the most important thing so all these things has to be calculated the risk and the benefits how it will benefit to the participant and to the society and what all kind of a participant might have to go through by uh, attending that clinical trial application of justice is selection of subjects is the potential subject pool appropriate for the research 
that is the most important part so what kind of a people you are going to select so it always have to be and in terms of clinical trials also the participants are supposed to be healthy subjects only okay vulnerable population is never 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 ever is enrolled in any kind of a clinical trial so is it appropriate to involve vulnerable population for example economically disadvantaged limited cognitive capacity in the research or are they being enrolled because it is convenient or because they are easily manipulated as a result of their situation so this factor also has to be taken care of okay are the recruitment procedure fair or impartial are the inclusion and exclusion criteria fair and appropriate so what are this inclusion and exclusion criteria we are going to study further so all these factors are to be considered when it comes to the justice right and currently it is the rule in clinical trial or in the bab trials whatever participants you are going to enroll for any kind of a trial they are supposed to be healthy subjects only so when i when i when i say healthy subjects that means their weight is appropriate their bmi is appropriate their blood pressure and other vitals are appropriate or within the range okay so that is the most important thing that you have to do a person or researcher or a institute have to do when they are conducting a clinical trial does the belmont report attempt to summarize the basic ethical principles identified by the uh, commission in the course of its deliberations it is the outgrowth of an intensive four day period of discussion that were held in february 1996 at uh, smithsonian institution uh, institutions belmont conference center supplemented by the monthly deliberations of the commissions that were held over a period of nearly 4 years so there was the, this conference lasted for 4 days where they could in which they can conclude all these three basic principles that we discussed about and it is a statement of basic ethical principle and guidelines that should assist in resolving the ethical problems that surround the conduct of research with human subject so uh, thank you very much so this was the end of our this discussion so this three points and we have elaborated much on this three points the respect for the person the beneficiaries and the justice so what do you mean by that i hope you guys have understood let me ask someone pratibha are you there pratibha <clears throat> yes, okay sir. nena yes your voice is little bit. so did you understand today's lecture yes ma'am okay was it clear enough for you to understand yes, the belmont clear. report okay yes. okay if you guys anybody has any kind of doubt even it's a minor doubt if you did not understand anything during the course of lecture and you don't want to ask it right now you can always whatsapp me or you can call me or you can leave a message on our email address whatever is comfortable with you people you can do that okay so uh, i hope i have made it very much clear what exactly the belmont report meant and what exactly we have to do when in when it comes to the clinical trial okay so uh, i am signing off for now we'll see you tomorrow tomorrow is saturday so sunday will not have any lecture yeah but saturday and i will see if my google form is opening tomorrow we'll discuss the test tomorrow okay thank you very much bye bye all of you bye ma'am bye